Drop the weapon and put your hands on your first and ask questions later. Drop the gun. Come on, man. She was non-compliant anyway, so. Let's try this again. I clear this map with every single pistol in ready or not to try to test which secondary weapon actually has the best gameplay. There we go. That was the last guy. Oh. Hey everyone, Spider here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at the highlights of some of the gameplay when every single pistol on the map all comes to the hills. And we're also going to take a look at some shooting range test with every single pistol on ready or not to really try to understand which pistol has the best gameplay in the game. Got him. Police, get down! This is intense. Instead of just relying on the documents that are online with comparisons of each pistol, which ones have the best penetration and the best damage, I've decided to put all these pistols to the test, clear the same map with every single different pistol, and really feel which one of them matched better my playstyle and what I needed out of the secondary weapon. Well, that took a lot. That took a lot of shots to bring the one guy down. Need to talk. Okay, there's a guy there. Obviously, if you want to do some solo gameplay gun-only challenges or pistol-only challenges, you obviously want to choose a pistol that has a decent amount of punch because most of the engagements that, will, that you will have will be with suspects that are armed with high-caliber weapons and automatic weapons. It is very rare to encounter suspects that have pistol only. But again, I wanted to test the pistols in actual gameplay versus relying on the statistics and the comparisons that you can find online and really test from a gameplay point of view what matched better my play style. Get down! Got him. No, it was a different guy. Okay, three shots. For the most part, I felt more comfortable with pistols that have lower recoil and a higher mag capacity. The reason being is because it is difficult to do follow-up shots with some of the higher caliber pistols because they have a higher recoil and it's harder to make follow-up shots, especially when you have moving targets. Okay, he's down. Cock. Suspect down, alive. Most pistols seem to be bringing down suspects anything between three to four shots, with the exception of the Magnum and the TLE, which seem to be bringing down suspects between one to two shots. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get an unauthorized use of force because I shot first and asked questions later. I think my teammates. I also felt that the USB 45 tends to be a good power weapon and only in this engagement where I'm trying to wall bang through the fence I felt that it took a couple of more shots to bring down the suspect. That was careless. After the gameplay test I decided to go to the shooting range and do a quick recoil test on every single pistol. Of all the pistols, the Magnum has the highest vertical recoil, as you can see in this video, which makes it harder to do follow-up shots, especially if it's moving targets. It only has six rounds, which means that you need more reloads between firefights, which could be a disadvantage. On the good note, if you do hit that one shot perfect, it is usually one shot to drop suspect. The 5.7 has the lowest recoil of all the pistols. It is really easy whether you're using a point and shoot aiming or you're aiming down the sides to keep your aim on the target. It is also very easy to do follow up shots on moving targets. And because you have 20 rounds per mag, you can just spray bullets down range in hopes to suppress and hit your target. I did feel that it takes an unusual amount of rounds to actually drop or incapacitate suspects.
The G19 comes with 50 rounds per mag and it has a little bit more of horizontal recoil. So not so much the vertical recoil, the gun tends to shift a little bit more to the left and to the right on a diagonal shape. Follow-up shots need a little bit more compensation and for the most part I did feel that two shots usually drop or incapacitate the targets. This is one of the pistols that I felt the best during gameplay. The M11 Compact comes with 15 rounds and a little bit more, more vertical recoil. So follow-up shots need to be a little bit more compensated on the vertical form. Usually two to three shots seem to drop or incapacitate the suspects. I did feel that I had to slow down slightly my rate of fire to place my shots more carefully during gameplay and it is not one of my favorite weapons. The M45A1 comes with 7 rounds per mag and a high vertical recoil, which means you need a lot more compensation when placing your shots. It is harder to do follow-up shots, especially if you have moving targets, and also because of the low mag capacity, you're going to need more reloads between gunfights. For the most part, I did feel that probably two shots would get the suspects down, which means that if you do place your shots carefully, you will be able to drop or incapacitate the suspects most of the time. The TLE felt pretty similar to the Magnum with a faster rate of fire. It also has a high vertical recoil, not as high as the Magnum, and it's also hard to make follow-up shots, especially on moving targets, so you need to place your shots carefully. You need more reloads during gunfights because it's got only seven rounds, but again, if you place your shots carefully, it's usually one to two shots to incapacitate suspects. The USP45 comes with 12 rounds and a medium recoil that mixes a little bit of vertical recoil and horizontal recoil. The follow-up shots need a little bit more compensation, but not nothing that you can't manage. And I felt during gunplay that one to two shots usually drops or incapacitates suspects, which means that this weapon has a good balance of punching power, mag capacity, and recoil control. In summary, choosing a secondary weapon greatly depends on your playstyle and what do you want out of your secondary weapon. Remember that in Ready or Not, secondary weapons are supposed to be that. They are your sidearm. They are supposed to be secondarily to your primary weapon. You will use your secondary weapon when you run out of bullets on your primary weapon or you're in a situation or space where it's easier to maneuver with a secondary weapon, your sidearm, than it is with your primary weapon. Of all the pistols, I tend to prefer to use either the B92, the G19, or the USB45. And this is because I feel that they match my playstyle the best. They have a decent amount of mag capacity, the recoil okay. is easier to control, and they seem to drop suspects anywhere between two to three shots. Doing these pistol-only challenges are tons of fun and they provide a lot of immersive and challenging gameplay. However, Ready or Not at its core is not a pistol-only game and you're supposed to use the versatility of all your equipment with primary, secondary weapons and tactical equipment to stay competitive and win gunfights. Especially when most of the suspects that you're going to find in this game are using automatic weapons and high-caliber weapons. Nevertheless, it's always good to have a secondary weapon that is trusted, matches your gameplay style, and it doesn't let you down in the middle of a gunfight. That's it for me, team. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next video. Until then, have fun. I got him.